Oh, Emir match, yeah. have spawned <laughs> it's time to do 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 Lucky card up my sleeve. Choo -choo! The pain huh. train is coming. Almost saw through my poker face. <laughs> Always best to keep a trick up the sleeve. Or two. I got destroyed by the Morgan the other day. What an annoying god to face. Uh, yeah, the Morgan is easily one of the cringiest gods in Duel. I'm just glad she doesn't get more attention. If more people played her, I'd be... Shave is at 200? Tiny, what's up, Erica? <laughs> Random story. All right, hold on, let me think. Let me think. Sorry about when you have to shave your beard? Don't worry. I'll get reinforcements, I trust. You're gonna shave it on stream? I could. Yeah, that would make most sense, I think. It's all for content anyway, so sure. Shave, and then I would record on my phone my kid's reaction to seeing me. Which would just be tears. Wax? Ew, god no. We are all in.
When the chips are down, never count me out. Oh, hold on. I gotta think of a story. Hold on. Sorry. I was focused again. Gotta think of a story. <clears throat> Let me think of a good story. Always a good day to test our luck. Let me think of a good story. You know what's a good story? Is the story of the esports and entertainment organization I ran. Always a lucky card up my sleeve. Um, so... <laughs> the history of how I got into esports is a pretty long, uh, story, but interesting. Um, so, when people ask about my time in esports, always a lucky card up my sleeve. When people ask about my time in esports, how I learned streaming, or like how I learned like what works for content creators, it's pretty much like part of it is because like I was in business for 12 years, then I was also in esports management. Do you still work with Obey? No, I left Obey. <clears throat> um, pretty much how that started was I've pretty much been gaming and making content oh, my whole life, just off and on, just kind of for the lulls, honestly. Kind of just, kind of just genuinely for the lulls. And then at one point I was like, you know what? I want to make Call of Duty content. So I want to get like a sniper montage made. And when I wanted to do stuff, I wanted to do it, you know, the best. So I got a bunch of clips together and I was like, I'm going to get with like the best editor in the game. And at that time it was, his name was Doom. He was the head, he was the lead, lead editor for uh, Red Reserve, which was like FaZe Clan's, uh... FaZe Clan's parent company. I don't remember which... Uh, I think it might have been Modern or Advanced Warfare. I don't remember. Long time ago. And, uh... They almost saw through my poker face. And uh, so I got with him, and I was like, "Here's what I, here's what I'm looking to get. Looking to get an edit. Okay, look, looking looking to get an edit." Or two. Are you looking for another org? Uh, I'm entertaining offers as a creator, but never in in uh, staff again ever. Um, 
So I was, I was working with Myth Doom. I was like, yo, here's what we want. I paid up front, blah, 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 blah. And then, uh, you know, like, uh, he's like, ah, I'm getting kind of busy with, like, this and that. I got something coming up for Red. And, you know, sorry about that, man. I was like, yeah, no problem. You know, I'm, I'm not unreasonable. So I was like, yeah, that's fine. That happens. <clears throat> so then we're just, like, talking about stuff. And he's being appreciative that, like, I'm not, I'm not being weird about, you know, like, oh, yeah, you know. I got behind on some stuff, you know, this and that. I got to get this red thing done, and then I can work on yours. I'm like, yeah, no problem. And uh, so we just get talking about, you know, he, aside from being the lead editor for, uh... We are all I in. Do as we say. Oh, oh. the lucky card of my sleeve. The Morgan is so fucking cringe. Um, <clears throat> and uh, what's the going price for something like that? It was like twenty dollars per clip. So if it was like ten or twenty clips, we're talking like two, three hundred dollars for an edit. Um, but that's to get it like from the best person. You could probably get it for cheaper, like ten dollars a clip or five dollars a clip if it wasn't that good. But uh, he was just really good at it. And. Uh, so we just got to, so not only was he the lead editor for Red, he was also the owner and like main person of Myth Gaming. He was the main person of Myth Gaming. And I still played Smite at the time, but I didn't really make much Smite content like here and there, maybe every once in a while just for fun. And uh every time. Just fucking wall hacks, bro. You're and uh so we just got talking about how Myth is going, what he's looking to do. He's looking to, you know, move into a business like esports and try and make it into like the next phase. We are all in. Always the lucky card of my sleeve. You're just like me, brains and brawn. And uh, so, so he's like, you know, I want to, you know, I want to, I want to get out of this machinima contract, right? So we can make money off of YouTube. I want to get turn it into an LLC. I want to get into esports. Um, I want, I want to get into esports. I want to, you know, do this and that. And uh, it was like, I mean, you know, I have experience in all of that. If you need any help, in the meantime. And he was just like, yeah, and then it just kind of turned into, he's like, yo, maybe you should, like, join, to the next round, then, maybe you should just join Myth as, like, you know, like, you know, maybe we'll get into Smite Esports since they have, like, a minor league and, you know, blah, 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 and they had, like, an SPL at the time. He's like, why don't you just... Okay. Why don't you just, uh, you know, come, come help me do that? And I was like... All right, sure, right? It was a way, like, if I was already going to make content, it was a way to start, like, you know, get my foot in the door somewhere. Done me wrong. And then I was, like, so I was talking to him. He was, like, yo, you'll come on as, like, Smite Manager, right? So I got announced as Smite Manager. We picked up a console league team. Um, spoiler alert, but, like, our console league team went on to win the world championship. Uh, so, like, when you look at, if you were to look at, like, the Smite console. We do it we the lucky card of my dream. They must have fallen out of the stupid tree. And, uh, by the way, when you fight that matchup, all you do is you drop Argus, and then you wait for him to drop his, and then you just drop everything on his Argus to where you to where his is gone. Because he they Morgans usually target you. You target Argus to where a second he drops it, you just drop the whole your whole D DPS on yourself and just get rid of his Argus. And he's wasted all his stuff on trying to kill you. So uh, either way, um, <clears throat> GG's. <laughs> get in um, he said GG's when you beat Sam earlier, doesn't, he just backed out of my lobby though. Um, so, uh, after a while when I was working on some of the legal stuff for him, the machinima stuff, he was locked into a contract for some of, a lot of his YouTube earnings from, from the organization. I was kind of working on some other, some side stuff because a lot of the business aspect of stuff that I've learned throughout my life, whether it's like in actual business, retail, e-commerce, blah, blah, blah. I've just also taken the time to learn how LLCs work. I've learned how to like start a business. I just, I like to know how that stuff works. That way, if somebody's like, oh, I wish I had somebody for this, it's like, yo, pay me, right? So either way, 
uh, I was like, you should just make me general manager, honestly. If you want to start moving into esports, I already know esports. I know partnerships, right? I know LL like I know how to make this in, into into an LLC. Like I like I understand the legal aspect of all of this. You should just make me general manager at this point. And he was like, yeah, you're right. So I, then I became general manager of Myth Gaming. Uh, we picked up a Rocket League team. Uh, we signed some partnership deals. We uh, picked up like a console league team for for Smite, who won. Which means at that time, back in the day, when when you won a world championship, you got a skin. So we were going to get a skin in the game and all this different stuff, right? Like when like when if you guys know the Ratatoskr EGR skin, they were a console league team that won. They weren't the uh, they didn't they didn't actually win whatever. They were a console league team that won the year before. So we were set to get a skin. Um, and then, uh, so, so it was Myth, uh, Doom, who was the owner, and then there was Nixie and Trip. They all lived in a house, and then his brother, uh, Doom's brother, all lived in a, a, a house together, which was paid for by a, an investor. Like, that's, like, where we were, at the point we were taking investment, we were getting partnerships, so we had money to spend, which is how we were able to pay, you know, six, seven, eight thousand dollars for, like, a roster of, a um, of a, of a, a Rocket League team, for instance. And uh, all of a sudden, it came out, and uh, there was some there was some issue behind the scenes, and it turned into a situation where uh, there was disagreements at the gaming house, and uh, Myth Doom had uh, paid for like weed and stuff with the investment money instead of like you know like what he was you know they they were given like you know like a a stipend to to like live off of, but like buying drugs with it wasn't part of the deal and that could breach our contract and that's legal issues and that's a whole bunch of different shit right and not only that he got in an argument with another one of the managers Nixie, and uh one thing led to another and he ended up like choking him uh which led to like uh, assault charges and all this different stuff and then all of a sudden myth doom just disappeared trying to get dodge the cops so all of a sudden it's like yo we won the world championship but like now their payment for like January and December aren't going out because nobody can get a hold of the guy who had the money. <laughs> so I reached out to the team and I remember being like, yo, I don't know what the fuck just happened. We were supposed to take like, you know, 10% of your prize winnings, right? But I know we haven't paid you for December and January. This is what just happened with the owner. He's gone. He's off the fucking grid. Uh, I would just keep all that money as payment for y'all playing for us and stuff like that, right? And then another manager stepped in who was, like, working more close hand in hand. Even though I was general manager, he was, like, a little bit more involved. He was like, you can't say that to them, blah, 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 legal reasons. I was like, we are bound to pay them, and we're not, and we can't get a hold of Doom. So they can be paid with the money that they would owe us from the championship. And, yes, this is fine. There's no legal ramifications as long as we breached our contract. It's terminated. They don't owe us money. Them keeping the money will make blah, 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 blah. One sec. Another day we fight for our Hey team. Liam. Hey. I have a question. Do you keep knocking over kids' blocks at school? Yeah. Did you get put in timeout? Okay, can you look look at me. Look at me. That makes the other kids sad. Do you want the other kids to be sad when you do that? No. Okay, can you stop knocking over kids' blocks at school? Okay. Thank you. Did you guys know exclamation point giveaway? You're goddamn right. Um. 
Uh, what was I saying? And then, uh, so yeah, so, uh, Myth Gaming pretty much fell apart. Not only was Myth Gaming, like, branching out into esports, not only, not only were we branching out into esports and, like, you know, our teams were doing well, you know, we're in Rocket League. Rocket League, arguably one of the biggest esports in the world in terms of viewership, in terms of, yeah, so, I mean, like, we were, we were on track. And also, at the same time, like, we had a lot of players. Like, Myth was basically the step to Optic, the step to Phase, the step, like, our snipers and our editors and our designers back when that was, like, the popular thing, we had, basically, we were, like, the university organization to where like you know like we weren't as big as those other teams but like all of those teams came to us to get like our creators because like we would just we would find the good ones we would develop them and then all of a sudden we send them up and that's like kind of how we started building ourselves up the amount of potential that just got thrown away because of that uh was just insane so then one of the so i was pretty much like well that was a waste of time and not only that but like you know doom screwed me probably out of about a thousand bucks because you know he would be like oh you know i got like my girlfriend's coming over i have like no money can't even pay my phone bill and i just took care of stuff for him because you know whatever and um yo i'll pay you back you know like once we get you know I'm, we're gonna start paying you like to be the general manager anyway we have like this investment money etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, I took way too much archer damage. 300. Um, so yeah, so, uh, uh, I, I got screwed up about a thousand bucks. I was like, ah, that was like a waste of time. I, you know, I guess I'll just not do esports. You know what I'm saying? That's fine. And then, uh, Trip reached out. He was one of the ones that was management for, uh, for myth before it died and he's like yo so you know like i have hype unit and i was like okay and he's like so you know like we're looking to do some stuff as well and i was like okay okay if somebody give me a mr apparently i'm gonna have to fucking try hard i was hoping to just be telling the story and not have to try hard but here we are um so yeah so uh he was like, yo, so we're thinking about getting esports as well. I know you knew a lot about blah, 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 blah. Okay. I know you knew a lot about business and blah, blah, you know a lot about Smite. I think we're looking to get into Smite, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay. And he was like, all right. Um, Goodbye. So he's like, you want to join up? And I was like, yeah, sure. So I join up. The org is like a 6,000, 7,000 follower org. They also do Call of Duty and content as well. They're going to start building a stream team. They're going to start getting into esports. We're going to start taking partnerships. So like me, this guy named Cope, uh, Ninxy, Trip, and then and then Stallion all started working on building up this organization. We built it up. We got, you know, like 13,000 followers, 14,000 followers, 20,000 followers. Everyone started following us. We started to build a stream team that was being talked about by like the biggest orgs literally in the world. Like, how are you guys pulling like these huge creators? And we're like, I don't know, bro. We're just, <clears throat> we tell them like we can't pay them. We're not signing them to a contract. It's just like, yo, you know, we got some other big creators here so we can, you know, do so you know like set up you know collaborations for y'all help y'all grow if you guys don't think it's beneficial you guys can leave at any time and people were just kind of chill with the you know like the open honesty about that right yeah we can't pay you we can't afford to pay you we're smaller you know what I'm saying you want to be here for a little bit you know like collab with other creators that we're picking up as well you know have a you know like me stallion other people who know the business aspect of this try and develop this into a business for you cool right all right cool uh, so we we did that. Uh, I got us a G Fuel sponsorship. I got us a Respawn Chairs sponsorship, which at the time now they are like the like the main chair provider for like Phase and all this different stuff. They were the main pro chair provider for uh, uh, the Fortnite scene for a while. And, uh... The shadows. Oh, 
Come on, bro. This game's so annoying. This game's so Excellent annoying. Work. Throw a cat. It's like, oh, sorry. Wall. Corner. Anyway. So I get us, I get us, you know, G Fuel partnership. We we pick up the number one console league smite team. We pick up the number one Paladins League console league team. We pick up the number one minor league smite team. We pick up the number one minor league Paladins team. So we're like all over like high res's radar, right? We're all over high res's radar. We're putting out good content. You know, all of our tweets and everything are getting hundreds of likes. All of our tweets and whatnot are getting hundreds of likes and whatnot. Just because we're putting out, like, good content, memes, etc., etc. This number. Your middle tower is under attack. Um... We're making memes, we're making videos, we're doing more than a lot of the other, uh... We're, put, we're putting out a lot more content. What's up, Alfie? Um... Than any other org. And then, uh... We go on to win the World League, the the Console League Championship, and then our 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 team of hype unit was inbound uh, wolves, uh, layers, right? Baronic, uh, Griff, and or erupt crimson, depending on who we had. They actually switched over to mouse and keyboard for worlds, and we actually took a shot at worlds and like almost made it to like the main bracket. Like we beat like we beat some of the pro teams. Uh, you know, our, our, our console league team in, in, in Paladins went on to win the world championship and all this different stuff. So, uh, we had a, we had a Papa John sponsorship. We had one of the top orgs, uh, up and coming orgs. We literally had like, I had like hundred thieves, people reaching out to me. Be like, yo, I see what y'all, y'all are doing as like a small org. This is great. Like in all this different shit. Um, I mean, I've been playing West all day, bro. I don't care about playing West. I might complain about it if, like, kids are beating us that shouldn't just because I can't get good connection, but... Or if I'm just, like, missing shit. But, uh... And then... So that's, like, all this stuff we built up, right? We have, like, one of the best... We have one of the best stream teams. We have one of the best stream teams, uh, you know, in, in, the, in the world. For, for our size, 100%, easily. We have the top teams that are winning world championships. We had 28 players at like DreamHack Atlanta, like that that were competing. We had a fighting game scene team. We had a Papa John's partnership, which is just unheard of at our size, and all this different shit, right? Goodbye. Looks like we have a and uh. Sorry, I had to, like, try here. And, uh, all of a sudden, uh, I will start to tell you about how all of that was built up to where, like, now think about this from my standpoint. If, if you're me and you're doing all these things correctly and you're building up this esports organization into something of value, we start talking about investing. We start talking about this org making a lot of money. I then broker a deal with them for all the stuff I've done for this, and I was like, I want 25% ownership. If you guys want me to continue to do what I'm doing, which is pretty invaluable, right? I'm, I'm building your org that you wanted into something that's profitable, something that makes money, and something that a lot of big people want to be a part of, right? So I broker a deal to get 25% uh, ownership without buying in. So I start to get the shares of 25% of the, of the organization. So we have a Papa John's partnership. I've now became an owner to where, like, if this starts making money, think about this, right? I'm sitting there. I'm working my ass off every day in upper management, corporate retail, blah, blah, blah. If I make this into something, I then am set for life to just work in the gaming industry my entire life. Right? That is, that is what is on the table for me. Right, that is what's on the table. So, like, we, we have all this set up, and then all of a sudden, Stephen Cooper, who was the league administrator for the SPL, reaches out to me, and he goes, Hey, so, we just had a spot open up in SPL. Do you want it? And it was like, 
for fuck's sake, yes, right? Yes, right? That puts that that puts us on the map in terms of like a big organization. So like everything is going good. Like this is early 2019, 2018. This is early 2018, something like that. <clears throat> so I'm like, yeah, of course. So like I'm I'm blowing through legal paperwork. Yep, get this done, get this signed, get blah 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 blah. All while keep in mind that I'm still working my 60 hour fucking like management job and still have a responsibility to my wife. I think I still had a son at that point, right? That was during the time where I have all the uh, the health issues with Lyme disease going on, right? But I'm still just trucking through these, like, four different jobs of esports and blah, blah, blah. Just trying to make something into this so I don't have to do this, this garbage, like, retail stuff the rest of my life, right? And uh, right there, we're in the process of a rebrand. We just went to DreamHack Atlanta, right? We just won world championships for a bunch of our teams. Um... We have a deal that's coming out with Champion to have our own hoodie on their site, like the Champion brand hoodies. Um, we have other people reaching out. We in have investors that are looking to reach out, right? Contingent on the high-res deal because the high-res deal immediately puts us on the map for getting, like, screen time. Screen time is what, you know, investors want, so that way they can push their product or push whatever they want. Um, that's the <laughs> and uh so we're in good shape uh and then all of a sudden we make the we make the offer to the I, I find out what the general offer is to the players i make what is a better offer to them i won't say who the players works there's no hard feelings um and the players reach out to me and they go hey thanks for everything you know thanks and steven's like yeah this is great and then they reach back out to me a day later and they go hey uh, we're not choosing you guys. Thanks. And then that's it. And I'm like, so I reach out to Steven. I'm like, yo, what's going on? Like, we offered them a better deal than, like, even, like, what all these other orgs offer them, right? They can make more money with our deal than any of these other orgs are making because I've talked to these other players and, you know, got the inside scoop of, like, yo, what, what do they offer you? Like, what's a good deal? I want to make sure I'm offering the players something reasonable. I don't want to be greedy as an org. Like, we just want the opportunity to be in the league, right? I will offer better stuff. I'm not looking to make money. I'm looking to be in the league, right? So I found out pretty much, like, what the going rate was, like, what the what the offers were, right? And high res pays the orgs to pay the players. That's how it works. So that technically qualified as income for the org. And when it qualifies as income for the org... I can then say to an investor, we're bringing in two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars a year. We're paying our players, blah, 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 blah. That sets up, you know, a, a cash flow exchange of we're bringing in money and they want to know if there's there's money coming in. And when there is, you know, we're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars. So that way you can pay a full team, which is probably going to cost around a couple hundred thousand dollars. Right. You wouldn't think so, but you start to add it up. You know, players getting paid, you know, thirty, forty thousand dollars times five of them. You know, that's two hundred thousand plus the coach plus expenses for, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, they reach out and they're like, yeah, we're not going to go with y'all. And Steven's like, yo, really sorry, bro. Like, I think you made a fair offer. SPL players make around 40. Uh, yeah, make around 40. And then obviously they get paid uh, for, for winning, right? They get paid more for winning and whatnot, yeah. Um, and uh, I think they get paid 46 is my is as i think the general base not including you know like you know showing up pe playing you know or paying uh pay for prizes and blah 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 um so they say they're not choosing us and, and steven's like really sorry i think you made a very fair offer but like i can't force them to sign with y'all i was like that's i get it and i was like so they ended up signing with a different org they signed with radiance in my opinion just because the owner of radiance with some like big League of Legends guy, but just being a big League of Legends guy doesn't make it doesn't make you capable of running an org. So they decided to sign with Radiance instead of Hype, uh, even though we had an established footing in Smite and Radiance didn't. Radiance went on to do mediocre. Uh, their tweets and engagement around you know like their players and their their matches ended up getting around like ten or fifteen likes, no replies. Like there was just no hype around it at all. No pun intended. So all of a sudden that led to a lot of our investments falling through. Right around that same time, uh, somebody reached out to Papa John's with a fake screenshot saying one of our owners was using slurs on Twitter. And they were like making public tweets about it like, yo, could you believe this? I can't believe Papa John's supports, some, you know, like uh, a small org that, that does this. And the tweets were obviously fucking fake. Like, like more than I was like, you think one of our owners is just publicly tweeting racial slurs? 
And they're like, no, we know it's not. We even had, like, our people look into it. It's definitely a fake created tweet, right? I was like, you know, like, our... If we had anybody that do that, they'd be gone. And they'd be like, no, we know. We, we understand. But, but we don't have the time or money to invest to, like, make sure people don't know that's true. So, unfortunately, we're going to have to part ways. So, literally, just because some random-ass 14-year-olds that don't like our org because they like fucking uh, uh, North better, right? Just some other random small org that tries to compete with us that just wasn't on the same level. Just because of, like, just, like, ignorant Call of Duty, like, 16-year-old kids, like, trying to ruin something we're trying to create literally is all they're doing. They, I even reached out to them. I was like, can you guys admit this isn't true? Like, I, as much as, like, stuff like this, like, you think is funny, like, it's actually ruining people's careers and whatnot. Like, inability to do this for a living. And they're like, yo, yeah, man, we were honestly just, like, trolling. Like, you know, like, you know, we thought, like, you know, it would just, like, bother you guys. Like, it was kind of just, like, not really serious. And I was like, I get it. Can you just... So I brought that to them. I was like, they even admitted it wasn't true. And they're like, yeah, sorry. We just, you know, with... I would assume stuff with their ownership. Obviously, you guys know what happened with Papa John, where he was like saying racial slurs i'm assuming they had to like keep their distance from anything like that right and they're not going to pay marketing to like be like hey this isn't true or take time to do it right or even bring light to it so uh yeah we got dropped by our biggest sponsor over that we lost our biggest opportunity with the sbl we lost our biggest opportunity with the sbl we lost our investment opportunity because of that, because now we don't have, like, a big name place to be in. Also, at the same time, it was like, all right, we can at least still be in the minor league in the con- Bro, please. Please. Um... Sorry. And, uh... So I was like, all right, we can just still grind it out in the minor league. We have a rebrand that's on the way, right? We have a rebrand that's on the way, which is going to be really dope. We got the champion deal coming through. We'll just stay in the minor leagues for now. You know, maybe another spot will open. We'll stay ready. And then all of a sudden, high res announces no more console league, no more minor league. And that there will be like, uh, like open circuits, but like nobody's going to sign an open circuit team. There's no value in that. So immediately it was just like, oh, so we just n can no longer compete in Smite at all. Oh, and they're doing the same thing for Paladins. Okay, I guess we can't compete in either now. So it's like, okay, so we just lost all of our esports. So we lost our biggest partnership. We lost all of our esports. We lost our investment opportunity because we lost the SPL League, league uh, opportunity. And it was like, all right, well, we still have uh, one of the best up-and-coming creator scene, uh, 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 content creator scenes, right? All of our creators are killing it. You know, we had Jambo. We had Violet. We had all these people that were, like, growing immensely. We had SETI. We had all these people that were gaining tens and twenties of thousands of followers every single day. Not day. Month. And they were just killing it. It's like, these are these are the up-and-coming creators, and they want to be with us. Like, we can just keep working on this. We'll focus on the new Call of Duty that's coming out. Um, we'll focus on the new Call of Duty that's coming out, etc., etc. You know, just once I start trying. And uh, then all of a sudden... Yo, what's up, Brutal? Then all of a sudden... We get into... I'm going to finish this story before we go into Joust, but we're going to do some Ranked Joust. Uh, I, I I go to sleep one night, right? I'm getting... I'm still getting ownership of the company. It's still an opportunity to turn this into something, right? Is what it is, okay? Uh, I wake up, and uh, there is just all of my DMs flooded. And apparently the night before, uh, our, our ownership <laughs> got in a minor disagreement with some of the creators, and all of our creators left. Other owners, not me and not not Stallion. Stallion wasn't owner, but he was the main content creator. Not Hyper. Hyperstream, no. Uh, this was Hype Unit. Um, the owners got into an argument and all of our creators left. Like, all of the big ones. The thing, the thing that we had built up for, like, two or three years all of a sudden was gone on top of the partnership, our biggest partnership, on top of all of our esports, all within, like, a month period. Thank you. And, uh, so I, I, I go back and I look at the messages and, uh, this was during the time of all like the George Floyd stuff, like the, the, the riots, the debate around it. And one of our owners tweeted out something that was just like, all my homies hate, uh, Nico, which was just like another one of the owners. And they were just doing it in jest, but somebody was like, I know you're not doing that with the, and they did it from our main account, like our main esports account. And somebody's like, I understand that like, that's a very n n commonly used joke. Right? It's, it's it, like using that meme, like all my homies hate and insert whatever, right? 
I understand it's a very commonly used joke, but they just brought up a concern. Maybe posting that from the main account right now isn't the most, uh, isn't the smartest thing to do. Okay. Like maybe, maybe that's just not right. It just, just with all the tensions in there and our ownership, unfortunately handled it with, it's honestly not a big deal. It's just a normal meme, not a big deal. And they're like, you're saying it's not a big deal, but other people might. And that's a reflection on me as part of the org and the ownership. I wouldn't say they intentionally blew them off, but this was stuff that I usually handled. I usually handled like the HR portion of it where it would just been like, you know what? No, you're right. You know what I'm saying? Like it was not intended to be, they were not doing it in a way that was intended to be out of touch with what's going on. Um, so yeah, well, yo, sorry but they handled it in a bad way. Me and Stallion were both, were both sleeping. It happened overnight. He's he's uh, UK time. I was, so it happened at like two or three in the morning while we were sleeping. Uh, we get in and, you know, we get, we have messages from all of our top creators that were like, yo, sorry, but like, I just got to go. So I called Stallion and I was like, that's about 18 months of work down the drain in about three weeks. And he's like, yep, I, uh, I don't know if I can stay after that, after everything I just built was just lost because of you know decisions made by other people and i was like i am probably in the same boat uh i still had ownership so it was like what was the argument oh that's that's what it was the argument was just um them posting a a out of touch tweet and uh when when some of our big creators brought it up that like that's just not a good look and and, and it doesn't look good on the org which means it doesn't look good on me and i just don't like that and they kind of no, it's it's no disrespect to them at all. They're they're good kids, but they were like nineteen. Okay, they were they were like nineteen. They were just kind of you know they're on with their friends. They're just memeing, right? They're just on with their friends. They're memeing, and I'm like, but you guys got to understand, we are a professional organization. We are talking with professional other organizations. We are talking with brands. We are like the like our brand is now what is valuable, and this risks our brand. And, you know, creators brought that up and, and you kind of blew them off. And I don't think you were intending to do it, right? You were just like, yo, it's just a meme. It's just a joke, right? But like, it, it, and again, there's nothing wrong. They're, ni they're like 19, bro. They just, they, they don't know how to navigate those those interactions. That's usually what I handled, but I was asleep and it happened too quickly and everything was gone. So I told them, I was like, I'm going to give you all back my 25%. I'm not going to ask to be bought out for it, right? I'm not going to keep it and, and just like, I could have kept it, and if it would get turned into something, they could have paid me out later for the value or something like that. But I was like, I'm just going to give you all back my 25%, and I'm just going to head out and do my own thing, bro. I don't have time to rebuild what I just lost in fucking two weeks. So my whole dream of like, yo, I could be getting paid six figures to, to run an esports organization, right? I could be bringing in bonuses depending on how we do. Like, I could I could work with players and... and, and give a bunch of players the opportunity to make money and do it for a living as well and teach them the things that I obviously use that knowledge to now start and launch my 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 streaming career, right? So you guys see like all the different things I worked with, all these different creators. I was able to see what worked and what didn't. I was able to see, you know, and then pair that with like my business knowledge. That's the only reason, um, yo, Alfie, invite me. That was the only reason I, I was successful at all.